Hey everyone, uh, it's been a while since I've posted here on my personal channel. Um, I've posted I've posted things, uh, I think some sermons and stuff I've done before on this channel, and, and something I've been wanting to do for a while is to just to kind of do more here with just personal reflections. Um, so personal reflections on God, faith, life, um, things like that, and I think that's going to be my focus here. And so, um, yeah, I'm just going to share just some stuff that um, I've been thinking through. And um, one, uh, I've actually been uh, sick the past couple weeks, and so um, it was a lot of time of just kind of sitting there and and wanting to do something, um, but not being able to, you know. And, and so for for me, that's a that was a big shift in my life, of like ah, there's so much stuff I want to do or need to do, and I just can't get to it all. And um, the the common verse used. Um, I've heard it quoted a lot as be still and know that I am God. And so I was like, you know, where, where does that verse come from? And, and, you know, does that apply? Because it was, it was helpful for me sitting there and just being like, be still, know that I'm God. Like it was this moment of, we always know we should trust God um, in our life, but it's a, a bigger reality when you're unable to do anything and you're, you literally, that's all you have left. Um, and not to say that I was in a condition of like, you know, uh, you know, I'm at the end of my, my everything and, you know, but, but it was just one of those moments of helping reflect on that. And I think, um, God can sometimes put us in those moments for that. So uh, that verse actually comes from Psalms 46. And so I want to make sure that I give, um, proper context to all this stuff. Cause I've heard a lot of, a few people say like, you know, saying that for us takes it out of context because Psalms 46 was written towards the Israel people. So it was something God had given to them, not necessarily to all of us. But I think as we read scripture, we can um, read it with that notion of, yes, it was a context for a time in the past. But is there something God is still speaking to us today through it? Not necessarily in the same capacity, but similar. Um so let me, let me read the passage here, and then we'll talk through it real quick. Uh, Psalms 46 says, God is our refuge and strength, a helper who is always found in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not be afraid. Though the earth trembles and the mountains topple into the depths of the sea, though its waters roars and foams and the mountains quake with its turmoil, there is a river. It streams delight the city of God, the holy dwelling place of the Most High. God is with her. She will not be toppled. God will help her with the morning dawns. Nations rage, kingdoms topple, the earth melts when he lifts his voice. The Lord of armies is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come and see the works of the Lord, who brings devastation on the earth. He makes wars cease throughout the earth. He sh shatters bows and cuts spears into pieces. He sets wagons ablaze. Stop your fighting and know that I am God. Exalted among the nations, exalted on the earth, the Lord of armies is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. And so there is most certainly a context there of Israel being at war. And, and this being um, direct to them of the Lord of armies is with us. Yahweh, uh, it would be the word used there um, for, for Lord. So they're, they're Yahweh, the personal God of, of Israel is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold, like the trust in them. And it makes so much sense when you realize that in the Psalms, because you realize um, when the, the verses use all those things about, um, you know, he, the Lord kills and, and, and stops the spear and like all that language that feels like, that's weird. How do I apply that to my life today? Well, the reality is it was written in a time when Israel was at war. And so it made a lot of personal sense to them. And so we do have to be careful when we take a single verse and apply it like, oh, this is for our life. But in the context of that, it is God protecting and being with his people. And so as Christians today, thousands and thousands of years later, Christians, his church, are his people. And so there is a sense of he is the same God yesterday and today and forever. And so there is a sense that he is still this God. And so we have to be careful um, saying these things directly in our life. But I do believe that there are there's reasons that these scriptures have been preserved for us and that there is application to us even here today. And so the CSB translates that common verse, the, the be still and know that I am God. It translates it to 
stop your fighting and know that I am God. And I'll be honest with you, I have not spent time looking into the original language of this and doing the research I would normally do for a sermon, and so I could be off or wrong on this. Um, and that's why when a, a preacher preaches, they should have done their research so they preach accurately. So I'm letting you know here that I am just reading this um, as like a personal devotion and, and sharing with you some thoughts on that. And so what I had been thinking through is to be still and know that I am God. And, and wrestling through that of, okay, God calls me to do things. Um, I am responsible for what I do. Yet he is absolutely in control of everything around us. He is God. He has all power, all knowledge, and all ability. So that means everything that happens is within his control. Be still and know that I am God. And as I was thinking through that, it was just comforting to, to, to know that he holds things together. Can things be a mess? Absolutely. But be still and know that I am God. And then as I thought about kind of the world and how things seem to always be a mess, I mean, it's always in the present that we feel like, oh, there's all this stuff going on. There's always been something going on. It's, it's history. It's, it's our world that we live in. And so the CSB translating that, stop your fighting and know that I am God. It's like, hmm. And again, I, I, I will probably at some point look into the, the two different translations of that, of why it, a lot of other translations have said, be still, and this says, stop your fighting. But just trying to wrestle through those two words of, okay, actually, I get that. The, the being still is, is saying, yeah, yeah, there, there's things God calls you to do, but the being still is trusting in him. Stop your fighting. Stop, stop, the, stop the, the debates about things that do not matter. Stop this war, literally in their sense. And, and what? And know that I am God. Know that I am God. Rest in that. And so for me, personally, it's been this struggle of know that he's God. <laughs> what does that mean? And, and how does that translate into be still, stop your fighting? What does that mean in my life? Maybe it means right, I need to be still on some things. And I need to, to stop arguing about things in my life. Not necessarily related to my, even my faith, but just other things in my life that they don't matter. You know what matters? God. Because if he created everything, and he oversees everything in this world, he is the end. He is the Alpha, the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He is everything. So be still and know that he is God. And how that changes everything in our life. It, it, it's such an abstract thought that I, I pray and hope that God works in me, works in you, to, for us to, to feel that. Because it, it's, it feels like an abstract thought, but the reality is that changes your life. When you go to work in the morning, when you eat your breakfast, when you, when you do anything, and you do it with the mindset of, He is God then it changes that perspective because everything that you do then has a bigger perspective to it. That my work, that God set before me to do, that he gave me to do this job, whether it be fast food, working at Walmart, or being a, a high-level executive, whatever that position being in that, be still, stop your fighting, and know that he is God. And in that, we can find what God's purpose is for us, to, to, to seek him, to know him, and I think that's what we make so complicated. We, we tend to put our purpose in the things that we do. And we put our identity in the things that we do. <laughs> Even as Christians, we go, yeah, I love God, but my identity often is in what I do. And God says, be still. Stop your fighting. Stop putting your identity, these things that cause all these turmoils, the things that cause war. Stop putting your identity and your comfort and your security in those things and put them in him and know that he is God. And watch as that changes your perspective on things. And you may still work at the same place. You may still have the same hours. You may still have the same income. Your life may seem on the surface relatively unchanged, but your heart and your, your view of life will change so much. And I think that starts to answer, what is God's will for my life? Hmm. Know that he is God. Trust him and see him in things and see what he is doing in your life. So 
I don't know. That's kind of, oops, <laughs> it's been something I've been thinking through the past several weeks. Um, and I wanted to, to share that for whatever it's worth. Hopefully it speaks something to somebody. Um, if nothing else, it's enjoyable to be able to talk through it and, um, doing it in a format of a video like this can be helpful um, to just think through those things. So like I said, I would love to do some more videos like these as they come up, probably not on a regular schedule, but just as I think of them. So if you enjoyed this, if you like these thoughts, um, like the video, um, just so I know um, that this is something that um, was enjoyable for you guys. Um, so yeah, there you go. Just some some thoughts on on God, faith, and life, and I think that's kind of maybe what I'll title this. We'll see, <laughs> but thanks guys for watching this. Appreciate it.